Hi everyone, a friend of mine asked me to show browser detection using JavaScript. So I'm going to write a quick little example of doing that for modern day browser detection because in order to detect Internet Explorer properly, we cannot just use the MSIE string anymore. So fire up your favorite code editor, and the code editor that you use is not important because we will not be using any special features that any one code editor offers. Now I'm going to be writing this script in such a way that I feel will convey the most understanding to the viewer. And there are several different ways you can go about creating this logic in script. Now the first thing we have to understand is the user agent string. So what I'm going to do is just document.write and in between the parentheses we're going to access the navigator object, the user agent string property. So we're just writing to the page the user agent string property of the navigator object and the navigator object gives access to lots of little pieces of information about the user's browser now if I test this in Google Chrome this is the string that gets written to the page you can see that the string Chrome is actually sitting right there within that larger string so I can detect for the string Chrome in that case. Now if I go to preview in Firefox, you can see it's a different user agent string because it's a different browser. And the word Firefox or the string, the substring of Firefox is within the user agent string. So we can detect for this substring. And it's that way for all of the different browsers. All of the different browsers that people are using will return a different user agent string. Okay, now let's write this detection script. The first thing I'm going to do is create a variable named BA which is short for browser array. So here is my browser array. There's all of the different little substrings that I'm going to be looking for within the user agent string. Now in the very next line I'm going to create a variable called B or named B. I'm just going to leave it empty for now because that's going to be the resulting variable. It's just short for browser. Then the next variable we're going to initialize is UA which is short for user agent. We're going to make that equal to navigator dot user agent property. Now let's simply set up a for loop that's going to run over the length of this browser array. And you can see we have one, two, three, four, five elements within the browser array. So this loop is going to be set up to run over the length of that array for each one of those. So we say var i equals zero as long as i is less than the browser array dot length we're going to i plus plus. That way i starts at zero and then it will go all the way from zero one two three four. So this loop is going to run five times. Now I'm going to add an if condition in that for loop. That way if the browser is detected, we can put the resulting substring in the B variable, which stands for browser. So the logic I want to have in my if condition is UA, which is the user agent string, the full user agent string, dot index of, and this is a method that you can run on string objects in JavaScript is greater than minus one and then we simply want to refer to the browser array variable and put the i index number in between square brackets so that means every time this for loop runs the i is going to be incrementing so it's going to access each one of these substrings one after another now the index of method returns the index position where a substring is found in a string. So we're going to have the navigator that user agent string that we're going to be checking within using this index of method because it returns the index position where a substring is found in a greater string. So that means if Chrome, if this substring of Chrome is found, it's going to return a number that's greater than minus one. If it's not found, it will be minus one. So that lets you know that the substring of Chrome is within the navigator.user agent string or the substring of Firefox, Safari, Opera, etc.
index of is just a way to check to see if a substring exists within a string and it gives you the index position of where it exists in that string so where it is detected we can then go ahead and put within the browser variable the resulting browser variable we can put equals b a and then i come on i within square brackets that targets the substring either chrome firefox safari blah 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 and puts it in the b variable the resulting variable and you can name this variable b result if it makes more sense to you and then after that on the next line we're simply going to break the loop putting break here just make sure that the loop doesn't have to run more times than necessary so if the user is using google chrome browser and it is detected right away then this loop doesn't have to run four more times to detect for firefox safari opera and etc it can just this loop will run just one time or if they're using firefox this loop will run twice when it hits this substring or when it detects this substring the loop will break and stop running because you don't want the loop running more times than necessary really okay and lastly we're just going to alert the value of what is the resulting browser that we've detected you can also console.log this for developer purposes if you like but I'm just gonna run an alert and it's gonna say you are using whatever resulting browser that was detected now there's also some considerations with Internet Explorer that I'm going to discuss in just a moment and I'll show you why so I'm going to first check in Google Chrome it says you are using Chrome browser okay now I'm going to uh, preview it in Firefox browser. Let me make that smaller. It says you are using Firefox browser. So it properly detected Chrome, Firefox, and it will properly detect Safari and Opera as well. Now for Internet Explorer, let's go ahead and file, preview in browser, Internet Explorer. Let me make this a little smaller so you can see it. And refresh. It says you are using undefined browser. Now, if you only detect for the MSI e string on for people that are using newer versions of Internet Explorer, it's going to come back as undefined because the MSI e substring will not be found in the user agent string because Microsoft is, I don't know what is wrong with those people, but they're constantly doing things weird and making life hard for developers. I don't know why. I think it's a hobby of theirs. They, they get off on it. Now watch this. I'm going to go ahead and put two more elements within this browser array. One is Trident and the other is Edge. Now I'm going to go ahead and preview this in Internet Explorer again. Now it says you're using Trident browser. That's because the substring Trident is found when I detect or when I check the user agent string in this newer version of Internet Explorer and you might also come across edge as being a string and not trident for some versions of Internet Explorer now if you want the resulting B variable to say Internet Explorer instead of MSIE trident or edge you'll just have to put in some kind of an if condition or switch break case whatever you want I'll just put an if condition here that reads if B is equal to MSIE or if B is equal to Trident or if B is equal to Edge then within that if condition we'll say B equals Internet Explorer now when I detect in Internet Explorer it says you are using Internet Explorer browser okay so that solves that problem that Microsoft loves to create for us and the rest of the browser manufacturers don't create that kind of problem for us it's only Internet Explorer now in your case on your production websites you wouldn't alert this maybe you would but you would normally probably write it to the page within the body element or you might even send it to your server side for storage whatever you want to do with that result and this code can also be packaged up into a class or an external.js file. Okay, so this has been an example of programming browser detection script using core JavaScript.
I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and I'll talk to you next time. Bye bye.